Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all be making our way to our seats this morning. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so thankful to see every one of you here. If you're a first-time visitor, we want to welcome you. Welcome you. We're better because you're here. I want us to do something this morning. I want us to purpose in our heart and purpose in our mind that we're going to put as much into this service. We're going to put as much into this service as we expect to receive from it, okay? That's the way it works. We put in, we receive. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's clap our hands and rejoice. Invite the Lord in this place.
Oh, let's lift up some praise today. The Lord has did some mighty works in our life. I'm thankful to be in this place today. I'm thankful to be able to call upon the name of Jesus today in this house. There is power in his name. Oh, if you're thankful to be here, won't you make a joyful noise unto the Lord this morning? Oh, there's no other place I'd rather be this morning, Brother Shannon, than right here praising the Lord that saved me. Oh, I'm thankful to be here. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you that are here today. The Lord's going to do a work in this place today. I'm believing in that right now. If we'll go in, if Sister Scarlett will get the ways to give up. We got GiveLify. We got PayPal at RiverbendPentecostals.com. You can send cash and checks to mailbox uh, to the Riverbend, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri. 63869. We got text to give 833-883-9311. We got a lot of ways to give. The Lord has blessed us tremendously, and when we give, He He blesses us for it. So if you would, if you'll say this prayer with me with faith today. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Press down, shaking together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come and give.
Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, you're all that I want. You're all that I need. I'm desperate for more. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to continue to pray. Because that's what we're up here to do right now is have prayer. And I got to say, when we had that prayer line last week, I don't know about you, but it's, for me up here, that was powerful. Amen. I believe there's some healings that transpired. I believe some miracles did happen because I felt them. I felt the healing power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I believe that we're about to experience the healing power again. And I'm just dumb and young enough to believe that, that it can happen and that no situation is too big. No, no circumstance is too powerful for my God. Amen. We're going to, anybody that's got any kind of a need, I believe that if you come up to this front with faith, somebody's going to lay hands on you and we're going to see a healing take place. If you came up here and prayed through that prayer line and you didn't receive your healing or for your miracle, by faith, I wish you'd come up here again. Because sometimes you just got to pray more than once. Sometimes you've got to go bathe in the water seven times. Sometimes you just got to take another step. Come on, instead of the devil trying to pound us and tell you, you prayed for so-and-so and they didn't get their healing, pray for them again. Pray for them again. And when that don't happen, pray for them again. Because I promise you there's going to be a healing take place. If it's not in them, it'll be in you. Amen. So if you need anything from the Lord, if you need a healing of your mind, if you need a healing in your spirit, if you need the Holy Ghost, if you need a, a physical touch, step forward and it's going to happen. And we're going to have men come lay hands on you. Like I said, no situation is too big. If you've been battling something mentally, if you've been battling something spiritually, you're going to walk away free. Amen. I believe it. In the name of Jesus. If, we can, if, if you're not up here, I wish you'd put your hands forth. And then we'd all bind together and pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray right now over every situation that, that people have stepped up here. God, I pray that your hand is upon them. God, and that your power will transpire, transpire through them right now in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, this flu that is going around, be healed in the name of Jesus. This cold that everybody's experiencing, in the name of Jesus, be healed. God, anybody battling arthritis or diabetes or pain in their joints or suffering or, or hurt in their body, in the name of Jesus, be healed. God, I pray for everybody battling a mental difficulty or a stress or anxiety that has risen up in their life. No matter what that situation is, I pray against it in the name of Jesus. God, I rebuke mental problems. I rebuke depression. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray that there's freedom in this place. God, I pray that every situation, every person that came up here, that they leave this front, that when they go back to their seat, they are free of all worry, that they are free of all strife, that the chains that have had them bound for so long, that the chains of depression, that the chains of, of anxiety, that the chains of the weight, God, that they've been feeling, they don't even know what it is. They don't explain it. They don't even know, God, but there's a weight that they've been feeling. I, I pray that it be lifted off of them right now. I pray that it will fall off of them on the ground in the name of Jesus. God, I pray every demon that tries to rise up against them, that it will flee in the name of Jesus. God, if you speak it in your name, it's got to happen. And I pray that there's some power that will go forth in the Holy Ghost right now. God, everybody, that, that there's, a, there's a situation that they don't know the outcome. They don't know the answer to. I pray that they can receive an answer right now in the name of Jesus. If they've been praying for a situation, I pray that they receive that answer right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I pray for somebody that needs the gift of the Holy Ghost. I pray that they will receive it from heaven right now. There's a unity in this place. The power of one accord and one mind, and we're in one place. I just, I'm just dumb enough to believe, God. You said it. I believe it. I, I pray for your word to transpire right now and for the Holy Ghost to be outpoured upon all flesh, upon everybody. God, I pray if they need a healing in their body, let them receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If they need a healing in their mind, let them receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
If they need a healing in their finances, let them receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and everything will be fixed. Every situation will come to pass. Every answer will come to pass. If we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, if they need a renewing, let them receive the renewing in the gift of the Holy Ghost right now. If they need a, a come, to come back to repentance, I pray that somebody will be pricked in their heart right now. God, and that they'll receive the power of forgiveness in their life. Maybe they've messed up this week. Maybe they messed up last week. Maybe they're struggling today. God, I pray for the power of forgiveness to be felt into this room right now. Nobody knows the situation that you're going through. But God, I pray that they can be forgiven, that they can receive the power of forgiveness in the place this morning. There's a revelation that is going to be flourishing in this place. Let somebody receive revelation from heaven in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that we can continue to pray, that we continue to press, that we can continue to worship throughout this service. Do not let it die, God, but let your spirit be done. Let your will be done in this place. And let us continue to worship. Let us continue to pray and seek the face of God. We want more. We want more of you, Jesus. I'm desperate for more of you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you feel like something's happened, why don't you lift your voice? Why don't you clap your hands toward heaven? And if you haven't received it, why don't you just keep praying? Why don't you just keep, uh, keep praying and keep worshiping? Keep prevailing in the Lord. If you need to, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Something's going to happen in your life.
That song is my testimony of prayer to the Lord. Thank you for coming today. It's a great looking congregation. And uh, we've had a, a move of God. Uh, I want to remind you, if you're able, men, we start about 16 years of age and older. At 8.15 on Sunday mornings, we meet over in the family center. And every man 16 and up is invited. And uh, if they don't want to come to church and they want to come to the men's meeting, tell them to come on. It's all right. But uh, we had a, a great discussion this morning, and the power of the Holy Ghost was there, and then elements filled the power of the Spirit, and then now. Yes. Tuesday night was incredible. Yes. Grateful for everyone that came and participated in that. It was, <clears throat> it was incredible. And uh, um, I... Uh, Sat down yesterday, and I uh, I came to the church. I don't remember what time yesterday morning, maybe eight thirty. I think something like that. And I just thought I would sit down for a minute because I was going to pray and spend some time with the Lord. And He had different plans. He just began to download into me what I'm going to share with you today. And uh, don't ever discount your daily Bible reading as just monotonous because God will speak to you in the word, a rhema word, a specific word for you. And so the word the Lord has given me is from the book of Acts, but that will not be where I take my text from. If you have your Bibles and you would like to turn or on your smartphone, iPad, whatever you have. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Uh, and I might say one more time how thankful I am. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, uh, if you didn't, it'll be hopefully the last one that wasn't great. Because uh, I'm overstepping my bounds. I don't have the authority to do this, but I'm just going to say it. If you're here and you don't have nobody and the holidays rolling around, show up at anybody's house in this church and you'll be welcome. You'll be welcome. Can I get a witness? Huh? We ain't never run out of food at a holiday. Mm -mm. And I tried my best to make sure we did, but it just didn't work out that way. Are you ready for whatever the Lord has for you today? Yes. I, um, I ain't never preached this. And the, and the hook, I guess, of the message, I ain't never heard it preached. Um. And I'm just going to let her roll. I don't, I'm not responsible for the results anyway. I'm just planting and watering. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. I want to speak to somebody right now. You've lived your entire life under the shadow of your past. And the Lord came today to tell you that's over. Jabez lived every day of his life as a reminder to his mother of the pain of his birth. But Jabez didn't let it hold him back. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. I'm in the New King James right this moment. The King James says, Enlarge my coast. That your hand would be with me 
and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Like I said, I'm a little nervous about this. I feel I've heard from heaven. I feel I've heard from heaven. But this is brand new territory for me. But I want to preach on a subject, a message that I've entitled, by the help of the Lord, increasing my capacity. Increasing my capacity. Do you care to put your Bibles down and just praise the Lord with me for a minute for what he's doing and what he's done and what he will do? God, we love you. We worship you. We praise you. We're thankful for the word, thankful for the spirit, thankful for the men and women, living testimonies, witnesses of the power of God. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. It is, it is my desire to not go too fast today, so if I do, I just got out of alignment. You may be seated. God bless you. Several years ago now, Bruce Wilkinson wrote a book based upon this passage that I read to you. How many of you are familiar with the prayer of Jabez? Several, several familiar. If you're not, I encourage you to familiarize yourself with it at your earliest convenience. He talked about the powerful possibilities that this prayer has given birth to in the lives of so many and the faith that it has manifested in ministered to countless thousands of increased faith. It is a passage it's almost an odd interjection. If you read the Bible through every year, I know, Sister Maria, I do not approach the first nine chapters of First Chronicles with a lot of excitement, Brother David. It's got a lot of names in it you can't pronounce and tells who their daddy was and who their grandma was or who their granddaddy was. And uh, It's a passage, 9 and 10 of chapter 4, is kind of an interjection passage into a somewhat monotonous telling of the family tree of the Hebrew people. It is a place that is given special scriptural attention in an otherwise inconsequential person of scripture, Jabez. We don't know much about him except this passage. It is this prayer from this man who was a living reminder of sorrow and grief that became his lasting gift to us. Now, the part of his prayer that I want to focus on or talk to us about or talk with us about today is when he says, enlarge my territory. Now, our knee-jerk reaction to that would be, in Jabez's time, more land meant more prestige and more money and more power and more wealth and more, your word matters more when you own a lot. His prayer included a request for earthly blessings, but I believe it carries a far greater truth and a hopeful promise of greater and greater and greater heavenly, and or spiritual blessings. And I will interject this myself in the middle of this message right now. I don't care how good you think you are, and I don't care how good you think God has been to you, the best is yet to come. Somebody say, he's preaching increasing my capacity. I am of a strong belief and have a deep conviction that there are things that God has for us that we have not yet experienced. And other than the providence of God Almighty, I believe that it is possible that we can be filled to our present capacity and then face obstacles, troublesome experience, 
and contrary circumstances which can be the crucible from which our greatest contribution to the kingdom and in fact our legacy could be established. Your problem is going to end up being the passageway to you becoming the greatest blessing that your world has ever seen. Your circumstances, oh, the you that is born in the middle of your mess is going to be the greatest you who has ever lived. The you that is born, that is created in the hands of God when the pressures of life mount up on you is going to be the greatest you who's ever lived. In Isaiah chapter 10, it's a woe, W-O-E, oracle, which means it's a, it's a awareness chapter. The Lord declares through his prophet a powerful lamentation of despair and agony toward the people of God if they don't repent. Brother Shannon, the Lord has always been very clear when he preaches a message that says, uh, I've got big things for you, uh, but there's judgment coming if you don't repent. We will never arrive at a place uh, as a church, uh, as a movement, uh, as the body of Christ uh, where we sometimes don't need to repent. You're never going to get to a place uh, where you're the only one uh, that, no, oh, uh, that no longer needs the precious blood of Jesus uh, to continue to flow over your mind, uh, your heart, uh, your spirit, uh, and yes, your body to clean you up uh, from the effects of sin. We all need it. The Bible very clearly says uh, if you say you don't have any sin in your life, you are a liar. He clearly says that one of their greatest sins, one of the greatest things they need to repent of is that they have ignored those in need that are near them. That just didn't cost nothing, but it's true, especially over the holidays. I'm telling you, I'm, this, may, this may destroy everything I'm about to say, but if you go out to eat dinner somewhere over the holidays, I don't care if the food's bad and the service is bad. You better tip that little waitress good or little waiter good. We cannot afford to disregard those around us that God has put in our path. And that is the perfect pathway for you to be a blessing to somebody that's just trying to get by. I feel a, holy, I feel a witness of the Spirit when I said that. It's a woe oracle. He said you better repent because you didn't take notice of those that were in need around you. It is an apathetic uh, uh, spirit of apostasy falling away, to, turning their back on God that has, that has taken over a, a culture of backsliding that has taken over the people of God and the Lord. Somebody hear me right now in the Holy Ghost. The Lord tells them in Isaiah chapter number 10 that your enemy has oppressed you according to my will. He said, I allowed, not only allowed, yea, I encouraged the enemy ah, to invade your life because I needed to bring you to a place where I could work on you. It's in there. I encourage you to read it. He said, but, this ought to excite somebody, my goodness, man. He said, but when the enemy decided that he knew better than I did when the enemy, oh, hear me in the Holy Ghost, when the enemy got out of alignment, when the enemy decided that he was going to do more to you than I was willing to allow him to do, I showed up and I smashed.
cast him down and I made him powerless because no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. I create the cause. There is nothing that happens in this world without the Lord allowing it to. You better know right now, your enemy doesn't have any authority over you, any power over you, and he can do nothing in your life unless the Lord says so. And it will come to pass when the enemy is destroyed that a remnant, I hope I can preach to this, Brother David, that a remnant of the people of God are going to head back to the homeland. There's going to be a few of them that are going to head back to the homeland. But then, just like I brought the, your fathers out of Egypt, I'm going to bring you out of captivity and bring you back home. I will deliver you from the oppression of the enemy. You have lived in servitude. You have lived in slavery. You have lived in oppression. You have been compressed by the enemy. And here's what it looks like. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. You ain't found yourself anywhere that the Lord has lost control. When he says, and whew, when he says, and it shall come to pass, rest assured, baby, it's going to come to pass. Look at here what he said. And his burden, who's his burden? That's the burden the enemy has put on you, shall be taken from off thy shoulder. And his yoke, everybody say his yoke, his yoke. from off thy neck. But then he elaborates on how the yoke is going to be broken. The yoke represents a, a bar of wood with two hoops under it to, that they would put on a yoke of oxen to keep them together. And what has happened while they've been in captivity? The enemy has yoked himself together with them. It is spiritual. It is not a literal thing, but it is a spiritual thing. And, and the children of Israel have been taken into captivity and have come into alignment with the enemy. Yoked together with them. They can't go their own way. They can't do their own thing. They have to stay right with the enemy. But he said, I'm going to get the bur enemy's burden off of your shoulder, and I'm going to take the enemy's yoke off your neck. And then he says, oh, I wish I could preach, man. I feel like I'm, this is so powerful. This is so powerful. I hope I got it in me. He says, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, man, well, that preach is good, but what exactly is the anointing? It's the Spirit of God that comes down on you. But somebody say, they're in exile. They are in captivity. And they're living their life yoked together with the enemy. They go where the enemy wants to go. They do what the enemy does. They live where the enemy lives. And they are messed up. But the yoke will be broken because of the anointing. Does anybody, anybody have the Bible on the app where you got the new international version that you can change it to real quick? Do it for me, Brother Larry. They won't hear you on the TV, but that's all right. Isaiah 10 and 27 in the New International Version. Read for me. Look at here. Listen to this. Isaiah 10. Everybody's waiting on you, brother. I know. 10 and 27. Read it. And it says, In the day their burden will be lifted from your shoulders, yep. their yoke from your neck, yep. The yoke will be broken because you have grown so fat. The devil got me down. The devil got me smashed. The devil got me oppressed. But one thing he did not count on, that while I was under his thumb and while I was under his yoke, I was growing. And 
the Lord is not going to have to remove that yoke, but I'm going to flex up, and the power that's within me is going to cause the yoke to break off of my neck. Hear me right now. I hope I'm in the microphone. I don't hear myself that good. But you got to know, oh, we look at some people and say, them poor little pitiful people, they're going through this and they're going through that. But if I hold on to the word of God, I'm growing in the middle of that. And the enemy can't keep me down. The Lord is able, whether by many or few, to bring deliverance. And Brother Brenton, I'm going to outgrow the yoke. Let me tell you something, there's a new revelation getting loosed in this house right now. No longer, Des, am I going to start praying for the Lord to deliver me, but I'm going to start praying for the Lord to let me see what he's doing in me while I'm, while I'm here. You see, it don't feel good, and everybody thinks something's wrong, and I might have messed up, and I might have done wrong, but the Bible says, can't no man take you out of my hand. I'm going to work in your life. Increasing my capacity. Brother Cody, the Lord made me grow when I was yoked together with the enemy. Until I'm going to swell up and the yoke can't hold me no more. Because I got, oh, I got a promise living down inside of me. I've got the blessings of God living down inside of me. I've got something bigger than me. When I started the first, oh, the first day I started this, it was bigger than what I could do. That's why he told him, oh, Zerubbabel, hear the word of the Lord. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Can y'all say that for me one more time? Increasing my capacity. You are growing under the oppression and servitude in the enemy's yoke. A yoke designed by your enemy to beat you down. And the yoke of oppression and servitude a yoke that for now, according to the enemy's definition, declares you powerless, will become powerless to the growth taking place in your present calamity. It is in the middle of my mess, Brother Tripp, that the Lord is making me who he needs me to be. And the yoke will be destroyed because you will outgrow it. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is everybody with me? You seeing what I'm saying? What'd that girl say that day? You hearing what you picking up what I'm putting down? (laughs) Forty days. Jesus was with the disciples after his death, burial, and resurrection. He spent 40 days with his disciples. The Bible says, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. In Acts 1 and 4, he said, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait, Brother Ronnie. Wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. That means Jesus Christ was a preacher of Pentecost. He's preaching about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. He spent 40 days declaring to the disciples of the power of the Holy Ghost. And tarry they did, the Bible says, continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly... There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting 
And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all, everybody say all, all. filled. Come on, say it. Filled, 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 filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. They weren't just jabbering. They weren't just faking. They weren't just playing. But the Holy Ghost filled them up until it manifested itself in a language they did not previously know. And they spoke it, surrendering to the influence of the Spirit. The infilling of the Spirit had been preached by the prophets, including Joel, the most famous it was declared as imminent by John the Baptist and Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And now it is here. The promised outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The promised outpouring and opportunity for whosoever will to receive the Spirit of God within them. What a change it made in the lives of those that received the gift of the Spirit. What they once shirked from, they now embraced. What once gave them fear now presents an opportunity. Where they once lied, hid, ran, and denied, they now preach and declare as the truth of salvation. Very quickly after being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they begin to make their mark on the city. Acts 2, the Holy Ghost is poured out and received. Then in Acts 3, a notable miracle occurs when Peter and John speak the word of faith and the lame man is healed. When they said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the old boy stood up when he took him by the hand and went leaping and praising God right into the temple where he had never been before because he wasn't allowed because his feet was messed up. Feet and legs. Great miracle. Everybody knew the lame man. They saw him there all the time. He'd been laid daily at the gate. Everybody passes him by. But when they came to church that day, there was nobody at the gate because he was going in with them. Healed, delivered. Everybody knows it. But then a tug of war commences. The disciples are basking in the glow of revelation, of faith and power. And the priest, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees are struggling to mount an offense against them because the witness of the power stands in front of them. Jesus. That old boy that used to lay at the gate is now standing there in the middle of them. You know, Brother David, I kind of feel like, the Bible doesn't say this, but I kind of feel like the Sadducees, the captain of the priest, and, and all of those religious leaders in their mind were thinking, I wish this guy would go on somewhere. We can't shut these preachers down because here stands the witness. So they throw Peter and John in jail for the night. But it was too late. About 5,000 done been added to the church in the middle of this preaching. But the next day, I want you to please notice this. The next day I'm preaching about increasing my capacity. The next day, Peter and John were questioned as to whose authority are you acting under? By what name do you do this? Who said you could? In verse 4 and 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, he got filled on the day of Pentecost and he's still filled. He remains full of the Spirit. And he begins to preach and to tell that it was nothing except the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, the very same one that you crucified, the same one God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. And if that wasn't enough, he went on to say the same name that has the power to heal you, has the power to save you. As a matter of fact, it's the only name 
ever given under heaven to any man whereby we must be saved. Acts 4 and 12. Peter and the apostles were riding high. Miracle signs and wonders are taking place. There was nothing that the opposition really could say to them because there was literally a walking miracle running back and forth across the front of the church giving witness that something happened when they prayed over him. So then the authorities threaten the disciples. Now what does that mean? That means they tell them, stop preaching in Jesus' name or we're going to do you something. You say, well, what's the big deal about that? I don't know. How about 60 or 70 days ago what they do to Jesus? Their threats still mean something to the disciples. And then they commanded them to stop preaching in the name of Jesus in this city. So what did the disciples do? Same thing we better start doing. Went to church. They went back to the church and those that stood with them They've been put in jail overnight. It's a new thing, Brother Christian. They ain't never went to jail yet for preaching the gospel. They, they go, bam, and this guy's healed, and everybody's excited, and they are so riding high, and now the people they looked up to, the authorities, the religious leaders have shut them down, threatened them, and commanded them to shut up preaching about Jesus. They went back full of the Holy Ghost. Those that had been baptized, or excuse me, those that had believed, been baptized and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Bible I've already read to you in Acts 2 said they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter's preaching to these people and he's full of the Holy Ghost. But now they've run into some opposition. They've run into an enemy that says, Shut up or we're going to hurt you. We might kill you. That's how they rolled, Brother Larry. So the disciples are tore up. They go back to church. Say, how do you know they're tore up? Well, they got together with the body of believers and told them what happened. And they said, we need to pray. And they prayed together. They persevered through the doubt of others, through the threat of religious leaders, through having been thrown in jail for praying a miracle into a lame man's life. They persevered through opposition, through pressure, through persecution. They have been going. Is there anybody in the house that you kind of feel like you've been having to go through something? Not yet. How many people, I don't want you to raise your hand because there's some folks in here that would judge you for raising your hand. But we're, we're about to get them prayed through. How many of you in here, let's just say the last month, don't raise your hand, I'm going to say this again. The in, because of the things you've been going through, the enemy has told you, won't you just quit? Won't you just give up? Matter of fact, he'll even tell you things were better before you started going to church. You live for God and this happens 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 and this happens. And, this happens and, and, you, and, and you know if you didn't have to give to the church, you'd have enough money to do whatever you needed to do. The devil knows every trick to play, every card to deal, every note to hit to line up right with our song of despair. I can't tell you how many times, especially on Mondays and Thursdays, 
after I get up here and preach or I get up here and teach and, and I, I teach truth and truth is scary, that I go home and the devil tells me, I think you might be about done. I'm, I'm just telling you. Persecution, opposition, pressure. But they came together and together they began to pray together. But only two went through it. But they all came together and began to fulfill the law of Christ by bearing one another's burdens. Now, I don't want to get excited because I want you to hear this. This is from heaven. I didn't come up with this myself. This is the Lord. They persevered through doubt, through opposition, through fear, through threats, through having been lied on and falsely accused and thrown in jail. And when they had prayed, Acts 4 and 31, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, and they spake the word of God with boldness. It has always concerned me. I have always been somewhat discombobulated at the verbiage because in Acts 2 they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Then in Acts 4, when Peter began to preach, he was full of the Holy Ghost. But here at the end of a... God, have mercy right now. At the end of a church-wide prayer meeting, the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And so you see my dilemma. I'm asking myself this question. How in the world do you fill somebody up who's already full? And this is where the Lord began to talk to me. If you ain't been going through no struggles, no doubts with your faith, no fussing and fighting with your wife or your husband, if all your kids are minding 100% and you've got more than enough money for everything you need, don't pay me no mind right now. I promise I ain't never heard this preached. I ain't never preached it. I may not ever preach it again after today. We'll see. So hear me. In Acts 2, 1 through 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. In Acts 4 and 8, it is declared Peter was still full of the Holy Ghost. But in Acts 4 and 31, they prayed together for boldness to persevere even further, to not hold back, slow down, be embarrassed, be discouraged, or be dissuaded. And the Bible said the place where they were assembled was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So I looked it up, and in helps word studies, gives this definition of filled. Filled to the maximum, full extent. But listen to this. The word pletho implies filled to one's individual capacity. Here's what I believe happened in Acts 4. A proper response to the opposition in your life results in an increased capacity for more of his spirit in you. I know, I know you're not with me yet. You wonder, look at here. The pressures of the opposition that you are living in right now is the birthing room of an increased capacity. 
the opposition that you're facing just trying to breathe. Just trying to get your hand in out of bed in the morning. Just trying to have enough gumption to sit down and eat. You are in the labor room. You are in the labor pains where God is birthing an increased capacity in you for his spirit. John the Baptist said, I must in decrease and he must increase. Everything you're facing right now, every trial, every battle, every opposition, every ounce of pressure you face, every gauntlet of life that you run through kills some part of you and decreases you. But I would submit to you that we have to look at it at what it really is, the birthplace of an increased capacity. That whatever the enemy takes from me is because God allowed him to take it from me because there was more of me that he wanted to fill up because I needed more power. I needed more strength. I needed more courage. I needed more wisdom. I needed more Jesus to make a difference in my world. He didn't refill them in Acts 4 and 31. He just filled up what room had been made from the pressures of life. The enemy will shove you down, press you down, and try to hold you down. But he made a bad mistake, Brother Brenton. Because all he did is put me in a position I'm familiar with uh, down on my knees. And when the enemy got me down, I, I lifted my head up. Uh, and my faith began to reach out. Uh, and I began to call on the name of the Lord. Uh, and I've got a little bit of a sore throat uh, because the yoke of the enemy is around my neck. Uh, but there's something happening inside of me right now. And I'm growing. Uh, and I'm getting stronger. And the resistance that I'm facing in life is making me swell up till I'm going to break the yoke. There. Shoved down under the enemy's hand. I will grow. Please forgive me. I will get fat until the enemy's yoke is broken and my territory has been enlarged. I don't need more money. I don't need more prestige. But the enemy has set me up to be ready, to be prepared for more of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, as the musicians are coming. That he would grant you, give you, bless you, bestow upon you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. I want to ask you a question. According to the word of God, when am I strengthened by the Lord? When I'm weak. Brother Shannon, I understand that now to me. When the enemy's battering me, slapping me, pushing me, shoving me, telling me lies that I'm tempted to believe. That I'm in the perfect position for God to make me a vessel that he can fill up. Because, Sister Maria, I don't believe I have the capacity to have everything he needs for me until I give up some things. Because when I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm about to show you this. It, it, it goes on and on. The Bible, in the epistles, he writes to the church and says, I want your faith to be perfected, and I want you to grow in knowledge. There's always more. Brother Blake preached that to us a few services ago. Yeah. Increasing my capacity to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ 
may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. Four spatial dimensions. The only one who fills them all. Omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, Lord God Almighty. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Stand with me. Somebody should right now be in your mind and in your spirit, maybe even with your mouth, saying, I'm on my way. I will decrease and he will increase. They sang it earlier, fill me up till I overflow. They're going to sing now, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I'd like everyone that would right now to please make your way to the front. Please don't kneel. Just gather up at the front. Come together symbolically and literally as it were with this company of believers. And here, right here, create within you, give birth within you to the proper response to the pressure, to the weakness, to the hate and opposition of the world so that we may know what is the breadth and the width and the length and the depth, the height, that we might be filled with the fullness of God. The enemy has come into your life like a flood. He will only stay there as long as he is working in accord with what God wants in your life. But when the enemy gets too big for his britches, and decides to start messing with you in ways that the Lord said no, he's going to squash him out. And he's not going to reach down and take the yoke off your neck, but he's going to leave you right where you are to grow. Until your growth breaks the yoke off your neck. And now is an opportunity. Can anybody see this picture? Brother Cody, depression and discouragement and failure and people turning their back on me and people abandoning me and people hurting my feelings has all worked together to create new dimensions in me for him to fill up. And the frustration, and the frustration that I felt Because where's Fran at? She's still in here? The frustration that I felt because I didn't know what God wanted me to do, I'm now in position for it to be revealed. And he didn't let it happen before I had the power to do it. Can we all feel the power of the Holy Ghost in here right now? If you believe the word, is, is there room for him to grow in you? Huh? Why is it? I, I'm going to quit right now. Y'all get ready. Why is it that when opposition comes against us, when it all feels like it's caving in on us, the first thing our natural reaction is, is to isolate ourselves from everybody? But the disciples are now full of the Holy Ghost. And you know what the Holy Ghost tells somebody who's going through hell? Get to church. I, I, please, please, please. I saw Dr. Whatchamacallit resign the other day. Thank God. I don't have a boss telling me y'all can't come to church no more. I forgot his name. 
But I'm telling you right now, don't get mad at me. Don't get angry at me. But you've got a runny nose, come to church anyway. I can afford to drink some orange juice and some NyQuil more than you can afford to stay isolated by yourself. We need each other. Brother Shannon, Brother Derek, get up here. Both of you, come on. Even though you don't have a suit on, you'll do all right. It's these two that were threatened, that were told, shut up preaching the gospel. If you don't shut up preaching it, we're going to beat you. We're going to throw you in jail. We already spent last night. We might even kill you. So shut up. Two men went to church and told everybody the enemy wants to shut us down. Get back out there now in the middle of it. Just stand up here where everybody else is scared to. Show them that don't nothing have no lightning bolts come down right here. And everybody came together and prayed. And riding on the wings of two men that had the courage to say, we believe God is bigger than our enemy. Amen. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. New Increased capacity was birthed in apostolic unity. This is my last word. Get ready to sing. They're going to sing this song. Let me tell you something. Stop coming to church with your lips stuck out when you're going through something. The only reason you come to church with your lips stuck out and your arms crossed and sit there like you're a bear with a thorn in his paw is because you want a bunch of people to come by and say, you poor little thing, I'm so sorry for you. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says uh, when you cook everything the enemy can give you, uh, get into the body of Christ, uh, tell them what's going on, and then let's pray. Will you receive what the word of the Lord brought you today? Do you believe that the mess you've been going through has just created? Come on. No place. Right here. Right here. Come on. Pray it to the Lord. Pray it. No place I'd rather be. This is it. No place. something terrible in your life you're going through a problem you're going through pressure you're going through opposition hear me right now even failure you went through a test and you didn't pass it 
you're in the perfect place to get everything right. Hear me now. This is going to take some courage. This, no, this is going to take some faith. You heard the word of God. I ain't walking through that door and taking my microphone off and saying, well, we got done. You need to go to somebody. And you need to tell them, I'm happy to know that what I've been going through was God and the enemy working together to create a place in me for the spirit to fill up. And the word said that the answer was found in the congregation. You cannot stand there expecting God to lay it on somebody's heart to come pray with you. If you believe that you're in the, no place I'd rather be, if you believe that you are in the place where the same thing can happen to you that happened to the disciples, you need to gather, unite with somebody. And you don't have to tell them all your gory details. You might just say it like this. Boy, that word spoke to me. And I believe in you. I believe God put us beside one another on purpose. And I believe we're about to pray. And this place is going to shake. And we're going to all be filled. I think, Brother Richard, I think we're struggling a little bit because we thought you just got filled with the Holy Ghost and that's just all it was. You know what's like, what, Connor? He just gave me what I could handle. But everything I go through, Shelly, creates less of me and an opportunity for more of him. So that's what I'm here for. They're going to sing this one more time. Would you respond to the word? We can't go out of here like we came. No place. No place I'd rather be. No No place place I'd rather be. Come on, would you go to somebody? No place I'd rather be.
service we've had today. We'll get into a few announcements before we head our separate ways. We've got a lot to go over today. We've got a lot going on around this church and that's a great thing. It's a good problem to have whenever you've got a long list of things to get through. But tomorrow night we've got one hour of prayer. It's going to be at 6.30. Everybody's welcome to come to that. Church cleaning this week is going to be team number two. That's Brother Terrence and his family. Brother Parkey is going to be ministering to us next Sunday, December the 4th. Uh, you will not want to miss that. If you can be here at all, be here. Right. He ministers to, uh, to us in, in such a mighty way, and he's just, a, just an awesome servant of God. So December 13th at 6 p.m. is going to be ladies' night. Uh, it says, see below for details, so... Please get a copy of the bulletin if you would like to know more information about that. But there is a sign-up sheet in the back. We have the renewed marriage retreat in Branson, Missouri. It's going to be February 9th through the 11th. So please let Brother GL or Sister Amanda know if you would like to go. Uh, we're going to be extending the coat drive for the foster children. Uh, it's been extended till November 30th. So this coming Wednesday will be the last day before we turn those coats in. And then Brother Jeremy Damesworth is going to be preaching for us on Sunday, January the 8th. You won't want to miss that one either. So, the most important announcement. Is there any birthdays or anniversaries today? Oh, another thing, too, looks like there was a key found next to Sister Crystal's seat. If this is anybody's, it's going to be sitting right here on the pulpit. Any birthdays, Brother Derek? Anniversary. Anniversary. All right. All right, we had a birthday. Birthday. All right, if we could have the anniversary stand up first. A happy anniversary to you, a happy anniversary to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy anniversary to you, a happy anniversary to you. And the best one you ever had. All right, now the birthdays. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. And the best one you've ever had. All right, if we have everybody stand in the house this morning. 
this afternoon now. Brother Terrence, will you dismiss us in prayer?